morning and welcome to Weekends with Whitney. Coming up on this morning's show. Singer-songwriter Richie McDonald sold more than 10 million albums, then walked away from the group Lone Star that made him famous. He talks candidly about why he did it and why four years later, he went back. The man, the father, the artist behind the music. I'm gonna smile. Plus, the woman who grew up without electricity or running water in her own home, but has managed to build this mansion in Mexico for the needy and a medical center in Africa. Plus, Dr. Nick explores the root of anger, why it's not a primary emotion, but a secondary one. He'll show us how understanding that can help all of us handle it better. We begin with being at the top of your game and then walking away from it all. That's what happened to Grammy winner Richie McDonald. I recently got to interview the superstar singer-songwriter and his lessons in life could help us all. There's a cake top convenient wall with the sippy cup of milk. Little blue eye blonde with shoes on wrong. She likes to dress herself in the most beautiful girl. Richie McDonald's high soaring tenor is part of his musical signature. Is my front porch looking in? So is the wide ranging breadth of emotion he pours into the lyrics. Few artists can write, sing, and produce crossover chart hits like he has. Well, I'd have to say he starts in the heart, you know, and then I guess just emotions, you know, and then that just kind of, I guess, goes from the heart to the mind and then out on the paper, you know, and just uh, a lot of the songs over the years have been about my family, you know, and just being inspired by something my kids said when they were four years old or, you know, something that they did, and it just kind of translated into a song. Life with his band Lone Star often meant months on the road. That's how his hit song, I'm Already There, happened. phone conversation I had with my son when he was four and we were gone for six weeks and I uh, called home one night right before we hung up Brett says daddy when you coming home and those words just broke my heart you know because this little squeaky voice and I thought you know physically I'm not there but mentally I'm already there and like oh songwriter, songwriter light bulb went off and That song is also his favorite. And while he wrote it about his family, it quickly became an unofficial anthem for military families. My husband's currently out in, at an undisclosed area in the Middle East. Um, I want to say I love him and the kids miss him. After 9-11, the song really uh, being embraced by the men and women of our military, uh, the message from home mix. You know, we, it's a song that we live not after not being away from our families, but we figured out that these men and women spent a lot more time away from theirs than we could ever dream of. So I think, you know, when a song touches somebody like that, that's, that's what I get out of it. I mean, it's great that we can make a living doing this, take care of our families and we get awards and trophies and stuff, but knowing that I've seen, I've seen soldiers on a front row crying when we sing this song. I know what that means to them. I know how bad they're missing their family, so that's, that song probably means the most to me. Lone Star has amassed 11 number one songs, 24 top 10 hits, and sold more than 10 million albums. But success wasn't instantaneous. Richie formed the band in 1992 in Nashville. For three years, they played mostly in bars. Then in 1995, they landed a record contract. Their first single, Tequila Talkin', made the top 10 on country charts. Their second single, No News, went all the way to number one. No news. They were consistently one of the top bands in the country. Then in 2007, 
Richie left Lone Star. He traded endless nights on the road for every night with his young family, and he soon became Mr. Mom. Always the composer, he wrote a song about that too. It's only A year after leaving Lone Star, he released a solo gospel album, I Turn to You. My peace of mind, silent voice speaks the truth. When I need love, I turn to you. A couple of years after that, slow down. Cause I love the way we're growing old together. Years after leaving Lone Star, he grew lonesome for them and asked to come back. They reunited and released a new album just a year later, Life As We Know It. We still are out on the road touring, and that's really where we kind of make a living right now. It's still a crazy travel schedule. I just came in from uh, Manistee, with, uh, Michigan, and it was snowing. There was a blizzard up there, but and. When we left there, we left there, uh, I guess, Saturday night after our show, and I did bus was taking us to Chicago, so I didn't know if we were going to make it or not because the, the roads were just covered. I go back to Nashville in the morning, and uh, we fly out Wednesday for Edmonton, Alberta. The bus is on its way up there right now to pick us up. The schedule is grueling, but music is all Richie's wanted to do since childhood. It's in his blood. My grandfather actually played in the Dallas Symphony Orchestra. Uh, played violin, cello, had all stringed instruments. I used to love going to his house because he had this room that we couldn't go into because we were kids, you know, and, but we couldn't go into it unless we were accompanied by one of them. I got you. But it was just, it was full of instruments. And it just, I was always curious, you know, I always wanted to see them. So yeah, I think that's where my passion for it came from. All that playing has led to amazing success. But as with any career, it's hard to stay on top. Oh, it is competitive, and I get it. It's still a, a hey, you know what? When we were coming in, somebody else was kind of getting pushed to the side. So it's just kind of always evolving, you know? And that's kind of what it's still doing that. It's, nothing's changed. You just got to, I mean, you can hang on, hang on as long as you want to hang on, you know? And, we still love what we do, and as long as, you know, we were in Manistee, Michigan the other night at a casino, a sold out show, and that still just blows my mind that, you know, we've been doing this for 25 years and people are still coming to our shows. So we'll still do it as long as they do, until it's down to one. <laughs> Thank you for coming out tonight, but when it goes to zero, we're going to the house. Richie, we'll be coming back to South Louisiana before too long. I'll be sure to let you know once that date is finalized. And still to come on Weekends with Whitney. She grew up dirt poor. Now she's feeding and healing the poor. How Sherry McDaniel is changing lives and the movie being made about it. Then Dr. Nick shows us why anger doesn't have to control us. New ways we can control it. After this. Maggio, the only way to go. Maggio Buick GMC, your satisfaction's our specialty. We really deliver on Fault River, here in New Roads. Small town atmosphere, legendary service for over 60 years. Maggio, the only way to go. The only way to go, that's Maggio. In a world filled with TV and video games, children are losing their thirst for learning and adventure. On February 27th, that all changes. Summer camp is back, and Breck is the place to be. Recreation, theater, animals, nature, art. At Breck, adventure is just around the corner. Register for Breck Summer Camp February 27th at breck.org and give your child a summer they will never forget. Buying or selling a home can be stressful and exhausting, unless you choose me. I'm Regina Roselle with KDK Realty. Don't just trust your largest asset to anyone. Go with success. 
I've sold hundreds of homes over the last 10 years, and I can get you top dollar for your home, as well as get you the best price on your new one. Email me at buywithregina at gmail.com. I'll do all the work. All you have to do is pack. Let's get moving together. This segment brought to you by all of our friends at St. James Place. Welcome back to Weekends with Whitney. You're about to meet a woman who grew up dirt poor. Now, seven decades later, why her life's purpose is serving the poor. 87-year-old Sherry McDaniel knows what it's like to be poor. She grew up in rural Union Parish. When her father's sawmill burned down, he became a subsistent farmer. And mother and I uh, worked the garden and canned on the wood stove for the winter food supply. And the men worked the fields six days a week. But they were rich in more important ways. Such values that we learned from our parents, we almost cut our teeth on that we were to get an education and to find our passion and to get out of the poor uh, living conditions that they were in. They had no electricity, no running water, but an abundance of love and encouragement. Sherry set her sights on college and went to LSU at 16. Her canning and cooking skills quickly soared her to the top of the home economics department, where she represented LSU nationally. She later married and had a daughter. When her child went to school, she wanted to work. I told my husband one day that I, was, I knew what I was going to do. I was going to design and build homes nine months of the year and carpool home from school. She never studied architecture or drafting, but she'd watched her personal home being built. That was all the confidence she needed. She soon discovered she had some real gifts. I can see a building built before it's ever on paper, or I can go in an empty house and furnish it. She was the first woman to build homes in Baton Rouge. In the 1950s, it was a man's world. This is a man's world! Even a woman working was an oddity. And I was the only wife that worked. Her hard work built more than 300 homes in her 30-year career. Well, I became uh, so much in demand. At one time, I had 13 going at one time. But she designed more than just the house. I helped them with the interiors, picking out their interior materials. They would uh, drag a water hose and I'd lay out flower beds and whatever. When she took her first trip to Europe, she was awed by the antiques. She bought so many, she filled a 40-foot container and had to ship it home, literally. Some were for her home, others for the home she was building. A few trips and years later, she and her daughter Susan opened the first European antique store in Baton Rouge, Fireside Antiques. But from that four-room house with no electricity or plumbing, I've had the pleasure of furnishing homes across the United States. Those homes included Hollywood stars like Jessica Lange and Helen Mirren. When Susan got pregnant with quadruplets, only the fifth set born in the world, Sherry gave up building homes and ran Fireside full-time for 17 years until she was 75. Then she was called by a higher power for even bigger things. I don't believe that God gives us talents to develop businesses and then just lay them aside. So I'm using the same talents that God gave me in creating businesses to create humanitarian missions. Surprisingly, that mission moved her all the way to Mexico. She felt a connection there. Of course, Mexico with third world conditions, just like I grew up in. I virtually grew up in third world conditions. She bought 30 acres of land and built an enormous five level home. While there, she became a Rotarian for the first time. It's a perfect ongoing partnership. Fun is that our clubs raise for local or district grant, or local or international grants, is matched 
I know of no organization that has th that system. And Rotary is in 200 countries, uh, over 200 countries, with uh, 1.2 million members. She helped build daycare and health clinics in Mexico. When her own health demanded she move from the high elevation near San Miguel back to Baton Rouge, she willed her Mexican mansion to Rotary for the poor. I've had that love of those less fortunate, whether it's through illness or circumstances. She continues tirelessly despite her own illnesses too. I just feel so blessed that God can use me. Despite cancer, I'm a cancer survivor. I have advanced heart disease. You're an incredibly hard worker. I love what I do. That's the difference. It continues in Louisiana with education, health, and job initiatives. She's also branched out to Africa. She spent the last four years raising $400,000 to build a health, job, economic, and commercial center in Swaziland. It's one of the smallest and poorest countries in Africa. And their people battle major health issues like AIDS and tuberculosis. Life expectancy there is just 50 years old. So it was a long uphill climb, but last week the fun was complete and the money has been wired to Swaziland. That effort and those of missionaries there will soon be made into a documentary by an Emmy award-winning producer. Sherry hopes it'll inspire others to invest in humanity to make a meaningful difference. That's the same reason she recently wrote an inspirational book of her own titled, He Lays the Stones for Our Steps. She's donating all the proceeds to the Rotary Foundation, but her book is about much more than just money. There's also a way that I can help other organizations with their humanitarian work through this book. There's more in here than, in, than the story of my life. A story of hope, faith, and service. You can grow up in any kind of economic conditions and yet get, some, get an education, find your passion, and go for it. If you'd like more information on any of those projects, you can head to Sherry's website, helaysthestones.com. And still to come, anger. It seems to have such power and control over us, but Dr. Nick shows us how to channel and release it responsibly as Weekends with Whitney continues. How can you afford the best retirement ever? In three words, St. James Place. It's easier to plan for your future when you know what your future costs may be. The surprisingly affordable life care benefit at St. James Place provides for the quality amenities and services you want, as well as the assurance of help whenever you need it, all for one predictable monthly fee. Count on the best retirement ever at St. James Place and live life well. It's that one emotion that all of us experience that we think can supersede anything. It's just so powerful. It can grab us. It can almost strangle us. Dr. Nick joins us this morning with news on the fact that, no, it's not the strongest, biggest emotion. In fact, it's a secondary emotion. Good to see you Good this morning. Good morning. Ah, right? I'm strangling myself <laughs> with my anger. <laughs> it could almost feel like that, right? But yeah, to... And we're not here to make people angry. No, not at all. <laughs> In fact, yeah, better dealing with and all that. But I'm intrigued to know why you say it's a secondary emotion and, and, when it feels so primary. Well, it, and, and I'm kind of laughing a little bit because I was, I was thinking earlier that one of the one of the I think one of the forces behind anger is a certain kind of self righteousness mm. that I've got the way that I've got that this is the path to follow. We get angry when people don't follow the way we think, and so I'm wanting to retract that and say, well, maybe it's not always secondary, but I think mainly it's secondary, okay. and I think the primary emotion that most researchers and, and people in the mental health world would say is that it's fear. 
Oh. It's fear. Uh, if, if a car jumps out in front of me on the freeway and I get into what we call the rage or anger, it's, is it really anger first or is it the fear that I'm going to get That's hit? It's the fear. It, it, to me, it seems pretty logical right. that the fear comes up and then I get angry because remember, they're, they're, they're connected in that they're primal. What, we're human beings who are, who are hardwired for survival. Right. We do that with our children when they run out into a busy street. You know, you, uh, yeah. you freak out with your kid. Perfect exa just, example. You're afraid they're going to get run over. Yes. And, and so that's why it's good to distinguish so that we can let the, the child know, I just fear for you. Mm -hmm. And I would think you were fearful. Sure. So, so it kind of helps to alleviate maybe some of the anger that might come up that, okay, it's, it's my fear controlling me. But I just think that's, that's important to understand that that underlies it. Sure, sure, and it can really help us maybe calm down quicker if we just go, I'm just scared. Yes, yeah. and all is well. <laughs> yeah. I'm still alive, I didn't get hit. It's the threat. Yes. It's back to that threat. But there are other things that can fuel anger. Okay. You know, I mentioned self-righteousness. Right. I think it can. Sure, I but think what about your voice? Like, like, don't people get angry when they don't feel like that they're heard or they've been unjustly accused of something. That is that is probably the most positive side to anger, believe it or not. Yeah. Well, we I think we call it indignation. Mm. When 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 we feel unjustly treated or unfairly treated or not heard or not having a chance to make our case and feel judged. Yeah, I think I think that promotes anger. And until and we I think like that's that, a positive anger. And yeah, I was going to say until we um write that wrong in our eyes, how do you, where does the anger go? How do we deal with that? Well, I, you probably are the better one to answer that because we, as we've talked before off camera as friends, you're not one to get very angry. Right. But when you do, it's difficult. It's a powder keg. It's, it's that explosive But kind. isn't it also I mean, difficult in that you're not comfortable with it? See, yeah. I think we, if we were honest, we'd say, I don't like, no one really likes to be angry. Yeah. Huh? No, it, it's a horrible isn't it, feeling. Isn't it disquieting, discomforting? It, it unsettles everything inside of me, and that's where I mean that explosive thing. It's, and I don't mean that I, I always necessarily lash out and scream at people. It's that there's this internal inferno that you just, oh, yes. you can't extinguish. Because sometimes, and tell me if I'm normal, you will just brood over that. Yes. You will relive it and you'll think, what could I have said? Yes. And, and, and it won't go away. Yes. And, 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 and that brings in, and I'm not sure that I have the answer for that, but I do believe the repetition of the story keeps feeding the anger. Uh, so again, part of, part of our responsibility as higher, as higher selves is really to say, okay, I've brooded enough. Okay. Time really? limit. <laughs> or, or I'm still brooding over this two or three days later, I'm gonna do something about it or I'm, or I'm gonna let it go. Mm. Because I think sometimes the kind of anger you talk about, the injustice or not being heard, the way to resolve it is to speak. Right. And say, I need to say this. I need to defend myself and make my case. Now, once that's done, the results are in God's hands. Mm. Okay. Right? Right. I, I plead, I made my case, I'm, I, I'm done. Sure, sure. They may or may you not may agree You may or may not me, agree with me. And, but that's it. That's it. Okay. That's it. And then it's done. I've been in situations like that before. And time is good for that. And you time have a great thing about um, time in the 24 hour rule. Yeah, just put it off till tomorrow. Right. Or right. give it 24 hours to see. Yes, we'll think I, think the in, I think the indignation and the injustice comes. Uh, uh, but I also think, Whitney, there are some other issues that go along with anger real quick. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the inability to, to feel the power, a kind of a powerlessness. Mm -hmm. When we're powerless over something, we, we tend to get, want to get angry and, and, and where's my power? Why can't I control it? And I think there's where the serenity prayer comes in. I don't really have any power over it. I think it's a lot of people you. feel that at work. It's not me. Don't mm -hmm. you? I do, I do. We're I do. not going to do it this way even though you might think it's the better way or you there and you have a new boss and, and there's just, or, or yeah, well, we're going to have to go in this direction and you just know in your heart it's not the right direction, which then calls... Uh, hopefully not just that internal anger it will either make you say okay well we need to have a meeting right and, and yes. talk about this or I need to look for a new job yes yes and and I, I would even I would even add to that that we would want to sit back and say 
what's all that anger about? And, and am I here to do my job or hers or theirs? And I know that there's teamwork and all that. Sure. But I still think we, we need to do our part to create an energetic environment that is positive and productive and fruitful. And that again influences the other people. Mm -hmm. How do you know when anger is such a problem that you need help outside of yourself? When it, when it becomes dysfunctional, when it becomes overwhelming, when, when there are no other emotions that seem to come up. Mm -hmm. It is not the only emotion. Where is the joy? Where is the hope? Where is the gratitude? Where is the, the spontaneous laughter? Where is living in the moment, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, that life becomes, again, almost stuck. See, I would, I would say that when you're in the mud, uh, that's when you're in the mud. And we got to come out of the mud. And the only way to come out of the mud is to, again, re-image what life is. If, if, if I'm always angry, something is brewing underneath that's causing that. Yeah. And it could be old or it could be current. I tend to think that it's probably old. Yeah. That just keeps recurring in another way. But don't you know some way. of these people? It's not my neighbor, but I have a friend who has a neighbor. And I'm telling you, there's this just grumpy man all the time. Yes. And he's older. Not that that has anything to do with it, but it just tells me how long that must be festering inside of him. And it, and it makes me kind of sad. It brings me to another reason that we need to tap into anger and understand it better. What is one of the greatest promoters of anger? Grief and loss. It is a stage of grief. I'm angry. Mm -hmm. I'm not able to work anymore. My neighbors don't look like me. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen my children in two years. My wife has been dead for two years and tomorrow's her anniversary. Do you hear, do you hear the grief that's underlying all that anger mm -hmm. and all that kind of grumpiness? And if, if somehow we could help people understand that there is loss and there is grief and it's okay. But it can't override I know it everything. Sounds so, I'm sorry? But it can't override everything. It can't, it can't right. be your whole persona. Right. But that's what happens when we get so stuck in who am I without that. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what makes me sad, especially for older people sometimes, who didn't grow up maybe in younger generations where therapy was more accepted. It was more of a really a growth and a retooling and improve your life kind of thing. It was a sign of weakness and you couldn't handle your own emotions. Is they won't seek help. They won't seek help. And you know, one of the ways we seek help, may I tell you a quick story? Of course. It's about your mother. My mother? It's about your mother. Oh, okay. I spoke to your mother the other day. Okay. And I was telling her that I was so excited about getting away for a few days and going to the beach. Yes. And you know what your mother told We're me? We're all going to be at the beach. You know what you told me? What? She told me. She said, now, how are you going to handle that? I said, well, I'm going to just say I'm off the clock and maybe check the phone once a day. She said, I got a better idea. She said, why don't you let everybody know you're going to be dead for the week? <laughs> and I was like, what? And she said, yeah, just be dead for the week. She said, life is so short. Life is so short. Go ahead and start feeling what it's like to be dead, to be unproductive to not be achieving, to not be, to not be on top of the world. Just have a dead identity for a week. Whitney, I wanted to send her a, I wanted to send her $160 <laughs> and say thank you for the session. And I'm not here to toot your mother's horn, but is that not a great attitude that is, towards she, life? Uh -huh. Just be dead for the week. She's never told me that because it's going to be a real struggle for me to get away for a couple of days. I There's know, so but you've got to love it though. I do love and it. And you've got to right. appreciate and so my point is, be around people mm. who get this. Gotcha. Huh? Gotcha. Uh, right. Who get this so that we can handle the grumpy and the angry. Sure. sure. It, and we if you really don't have those, do need to them. choose people that are going to give us sobriety. Mm. Yeah. It was sobering. I didn't get angry when she said be dead for a week. <laughs> I said, I think that's right. I just need to lie on the beach like I'm in a coffin. So I'm really? I just lied oh. lie there and pretend you're dead. I think it's going to be wonderful. I think it is I too. I am not crazy. This is a great idea. <laughs> Allow yourselves, huh? Yeah, yeah. I think it's a great, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm I thinking. know you're How thinking. How can I do that? <laughs> your, the words of your mother, you didn't think that was coming. I know, she has I, a lot of wisdom. Oh, does she? She does, she does. And I'm glad other people glean it. Does you know? she? Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Does she? Yeah. 
Well, anyway. Anyway. So, I'll we're, see you at the beach. We're, 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 not, we're not angry. <laughs> there will be no anger at the beach. Like no the anger at the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Just calm serenity. A relaxed body. That's right. But thank you for the tools to help us when we, when we see it and feel it to deal more productively with it. Thank You're you. very welcome, Whitney. Happy weekend, everyone. That's right. Much more Weekends with Whitney right after this. Go Roof is proud to serve the Baton Rouge and surrounding areas with our years of experience and quality service. We want more than just your roofing needs. Go Roof cares about the client and wants you to be our customer for life. Roof replacement, repair, vents, and more. Go Roof will get it done. We have excellent standing relationships with all the top insurance companies, so making your claim is fast and easy. A beautiful roof every single time at Go Roof. Call now for a free estimate. Hi, I'm Drew Detlitz and welcome to Camp Bow Wow. We are Baton Rouge's premier doggy day camp, daycare, and behavioral training facility. Spanning over 14,000 square feet, your dog has plenty of room to play. We have covered yards that will protect your dog from the sun and rain. We have a state-of-the-art HD monitoring system so you can watch your dog throughout the day. And don't forget, we also offer luxury suites. So, stop in for a tour today and schedule your interview and get your first day free. This is Camp Bow Wow, where a dog can truly be a dog. The new year is a perfect time to make your money work hard for you. Hi, I'm Ian James, financial advisor and president of Capital Financial Group. Like millions of Americans, you're likely paying higher taxes and higher fees than you probably should. With 20 years of industry experience, I have a proven plan to analyze your investments and reduce hidden costs and fees. You work hard for your money. It's time to let your money work hard for you. Call me, Ian James, for a free, no obligation portfolio review and a brighter financial future. Atlas Foundation Repair, fixing your foundation problems for more than 30 years while preserving and protecting your trees. Thanks so much for spending part of your day with us here on Weekends with Whitney. We hope to see you back here again next week. This morning we leave you with something a little different. I recently ran across a camel living along the coast. It's not something you see very often, nor do you see one drinking Dr. Pepper. Have a great Sunday.